So my name is Thibaut. Family name is Rehol, but it's been too complicated. Everybody will forget that. Um, I'm a Frenchman. I, I was born in France. I grew up in France for the first 20, maybe 25 years of my life. Uh, since then, I spent 80% of my life outside of France. But, uh, but I was born and grew up in a city, in Paris. Not born in Paris, but most of my years I grew up in Paris, um, in a family of five. Um, in, a, in a very typical, let's say, environment, uh, family, school, school, family, uh, but a lot of independence as well in the way I grew up, uh, given the structure of you know, my family and where I lived and whatever. Uh, a lot of relationship with, um, with my brother, uh, and we did multiple, you know, very interesting and funny things that, you know, kids do or did back in the years, we're talking about the 70s. In Paris, um, there was very little issues around security, so we would wander around in the streets of Paris many hours after curfew, and uh, and this this has been uh, this has been great. Um, as a kid, I read a lot. I think it has prompted me to uh, you know maybe creativity or imagination. Um, as a kid, I was uh, good in school. Let me say. Um, so I went to elite schools and I was quite fortunate uh, to start early, a very interesting career thanks to the studies and everything. Okay, so the two most important women in my life, uh, certainly the most important one is my wife, uh, Marjolaine. Um, next week, in a week's time exactly, we'll be celebrating 25 years of uh, marriage. Um, she's been my rock. Uh, many people ask me, you know, what are the recipes of success and certainly being, you know, standing on a very strong uh, base, very strong um, foundation uh, is part of the recipe for success and my wife is the first member of that, uh, of that foundation as, you know, my family. My mother uh, was, um, I would say, somebody quite inspiring in uh, the way she um, the way she would she would tell stories and uh, where she was coming from and her dreams um, she was born in um, in Beirut in Lebanon uh, my grandmother was actually Syrian uh, and we always heard these stories about you know that part of the world that culture uh, of Middle East Quite foolishly, when I came here, I started running. And then I realized, I mean, what am I doing running among Kenyans? But uh, I think it has really picked on me, so I will definitely continue to do that. I also learned that Kenyans are just normal people. It's only, you know, those, uh, you know, fortunate enough to have been born uh, in that part of the Rift Valley that can actually win, uh, win uh, world gold medals. But for the rest of us, it's, it's everybody is. is um, the same in the face of the track you have to train and, and, it's, and it's hard so definitely running is one of them. The other thing that I really picked from, uh, uh, from being a Kenyan is having side hustles. So I think it also combined with, uh, you know, learnings and learning new things. Uh, so spending this time in Kenya I've grown so much side hustles. I'm a beekeeper, uh, I'm, a, I'm a cook, uh, I'm a coach. Um, all of this doesn't really bring <laughs> a lot of extra uh, business uh, for me, but, but it's, it's just, you know, uh, having other interests in life, possibly other careers in the future. Uh, that's definitely something that, uh, that I think, you know, will stick with me. Of course, um, I think that the Kenyan uh, humanness, the Kenyan sense of community uh, has really impacted me. Um, and, and this, this will not change. Of course, some of the links that I've built with friends, with community, with families here will remain beyond the distance. Um, I'm of course living with a lot of, you know, uh, sadness and my heart, you know, aches, but my heart is full of all these, all these nice memories and I know I will also come back and have opportunities to nurture that, uh, that link. So certainly this, um, you know, this community, this uh, Harambe spirit, uh, the fact that 
that is a belonging beyond just you know just your family um, I think is um, is uh, is quite quite strong the thing that I've definitely refused to uh, is to buy a piece of land <laughs> so I've not bought a piece of land um, but it's fine a piece of my heart is there so it's okay I think Bob for me um, if there is one thing it's about the trust uh, when I look at my relationship with Bob for the past eight years I would say that trust is like um, maybe it's like sunshine um, you can't grow without you know without trust uh, there's that good feeling when trust is here. You immediately know when trust is not there as well. Uh, so it's, it's really a little bit like sunshine and I, I really appreciate so much the fact that through the relationship, through the mutual understanding and thanks to you know, his character, he gave me trust. He entrusted me with a very important part of the business, with a very important part of the team, with key responsibilities. and. I knew that, you know, um, I was in safe hands because he was looking after me but with trust and I could actually develop, grow things, do my own stuff. And the, the reporting was, you know, very easy and it was conversational more than anything else. Um, because, you know, he knew I would do the right thing. Um, I think he was hoping I would do it in the right way. Um, Sometimes he had maybe no idea, but it was not really important uh, because you could see maybe some other results through other channels. Um, so for me, that's that's one very very important um, element of the relationship out of the so many. Integrity. I think that uh, if you're not if if you're not um, with strong values, uh, there's no way you can really go far in, in this life. Despite having very different upbringings, uh, Bob and I said, I think we shared some of the values. Um, and, uh, and we had debate about that, um, about these values. I think I'm a man of faith and, 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 and Bob had its questions about that. We had a lot of debate and, um, and we, we used to speak a lot about books. And we exchanged books. I mean, not really exchanged, because I, I I could never come with a book that he had not read. But he would give me books that I could read. And uh, and there's one uh, for which I really hated him, uh, because that book actually uh, really shook my faith. And uh, and and we later discussed about that. And I told him, and I, I actually pointed to the, the you know the real uh, issues that was there. And I think, and I got that even from one which told me that I actually he was quite happy and proud that he had shaken my face. I mean, the good thing about shaking the face is that it makes it only stronger. So that's fine. But it was it was about sharing values as well. And um, and, and 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 back to the point that you know strong values then drive to integrity. And Bob, for example, I can remember one of Bob's birthday. Uh, we went to. Um, so I think he, ha he had invited uh, us in Exco to join him for the birthday. It was not uh, not a typical one. So we went to Dagoretti, uh, Dagoretti South, in a, in a in a children home uh, that he had there that he was supporting. Um, really, really a humbling moment. Uh, we spent the afternoon there, uh, just you know, helping the kids bring a couple of things. So it was his birthday, but it was of course him, uh, you know, providing gifts, providing support, providing something for these uh, needy kids. Uh, that that was the human side of Bob, yeah. And he was also very keen to let us uh, live that part of our life, yes. Uh, bring the human, which is inside each and every of us. And I think this is also very strong. Um, a very powerful message, again, from a powerhouse like Safaricom, like the CEO of uh, this listed company that represents 50% of the Nairobi Stock Exchange, to be able to come to this humble, uh, humanness nature that is his, I think is, is quite fantastic. Um, fun was there as well. I think that uh, uh, there's been so much, so much humor about, uh, you know, the way he would address me, especially in public. He was always referred to me as the Frenchman. He was always referred to the fact that I was hired, certainly not for my technical skills. I mean, 
this type of things, uh, it would crack so many jokes and, uh, and, 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 and I know I was, and I feel honored by the way, to have been in many of these jokes. Um, because that was also still a show of respect and trust, by the way. Uh, you know, you don't crack a joke on somebody that's actually, you, you know, you don't have his back or whatever.